All right, to get the projector to be able to work with FPP, we need to download and configure FPP on our Raspberry Pi. So what we'll need is an SD card. And then from there, we are gonna open up Google and go to the FPP GitHub page. So I usually just type in FPP and then the latest version. So the latest OS is 5.0. That will get us to the GitHub page. The latest version is 5.5. So go ahead and click on that. Scroll down a little bit and you'll have the different versions to download over here. What we're looking for is FPP v 5.5-pi for the Raspberry Pi and then image.zip. So go ahead and download that. It's a 1.13 gigabit file. So that's gonna take a minute or so to download. So I'll speed this part up and I will be back in a minute. All right, now that that is done, let's go ahead and put our SD card into the computer. So after it's finished downloading, go ahead and open up SD card formatter. It'll give you an alert. Go ahead and say yes. And then it should find your SD card. If not, you can click this drop down to make sure you navigate to the correct path. Go ahead and click on format that will erase everything on the drive. That's just giving you an alert to remind you of that. Go ahead and say yes. Then it'll tell you that it was done and complete. And then the next step is to use Etcher to put the FPP image onto that card. So go ahead and open up Etcher. And then you're gonna select the image, that's the Raspberry Pi image you just downloaded. So FPP version 5.5. And then you're gonna select the drive, that's the SD card you just formatted. Click continue and then click flash. It's gonna tell you this is going to erase everything again. Go ahead and say yes. It will give you a Windows control command prompt. Go ahead and say yes and then it will start to write and flash the software. This process will take a few minutes, so I'll speed this part up and then we'll get the Raspberry Pi configured. So now that this is done, we can eject the SD card from our computer and we can connect it into the Raspberry Pi. So let's jump over there. So we have our SD card. Go ahead and we'll take it out of the USB and then flip the Raspberry Pi over. Go ahead and insert the SD card. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to connect our Raspberry Pi to ethernet. And then go ahead and we can plug this into power. So once this boots up, we should be able to see it on our network. So let's jump back over to the computer. We'll get this configured and then we will put this in the enclosure with the projector. So what you're going to do is log in to your router. And then you're going to go to your connected clients. And you should have a new FPP device on your network. In my case, this is this 30.12 right here. So go ahead and type that IP address into your URL. All right, and after a few seconds, it should connect. And the first thing you're gonna have to do is expand the storage so it will tell you the SD card has unused space. Click this little dialog box here to open storage settings. 
and then you're going to click grow file system. Go ahead and say yes. And it's going to ask you to reboot. We have to do a couple other settings, so we're going to hold off on that for right now. Go ahead and click on status control and then click on network. And then click on interface. And we are going to have this connected via Wi-Fi, so click on your WLAN. And from here, I set a static IP address, but you could leave it DHCP if you wanted. So pick something that is not currently in use. Um, you're going to use 255.255.255.0, most likely, as your subnet mask. And then go ahead and put in your default gateway. Go ahead and pick the network you want this to join and its password. And then you can say update interface. Go ahead and jump over to your host and DNS settings. And you can give this a name. And then for the DNS server, I use my IP address for my router. And then I use CloudFares 1.1.1.1. You could also use Google's 8.8.8, .8 really doesn't matter. And then go ahead and say update DNS. And then from here, go ahead and you can reboot. After a minute or so, when this reboots in this upper corner, you should have two connected networks, one for the Ethernet, since that's still connected, and then an additional one for the Wi-Fi chip. Um, once you've confirmed the Wi-Fi is connected, you can disconnect the Ethernet. So because I also set the Wi-Fi interface to be in dot 14. Um, I typed in that IP address in the URL and it came up and because the Ethernet port was set to DHCP the IP address actually changed which is why that's not loading. So my Wi-Fi will always be dot 14 because that's how I set it. So the dot 12 I entered originally is no longer relevant because it changed to dot 8. Every time that reboots, it could get a different IP address if it is not set as static. Once this reboots, you're going to click on Content Setup and Plugin Manager. Scroll down until you see Projector Control and click Install. And then click on Input and Output Setup. Come down to Plugins and Projector Control. And then we need to configure the plugin. So the first option, we need to check this plugin box. Connection type, I'm using serial. Um, you could also try using IP. I originally tried to use IP and ran into some issues, so I went back to serial. The projector I'm using is an Epson Powerlight 530. That's not an option, so I'm just going to pick any Epson Powerlight on here. And then to get the baud rate, char bit, stop bits and all of this information, what you're going to do is just Google the projector that you're using and baud rate or parity bits, whatever you want to add there. And it'll pull up some type of user guide. Scroll down until you find the section that talks about it. And then type in those numbers. So I have 9600 for the baud rate. I have char bits of eight, stop bits of one, no parity. And if you add a password for the projector, you can put that information in here. Go ahead and you can say update plugin. Also, you wanna save the config. Um, after that, then what you can do is go over to your master FPP if you're also running one of those. And then you can set up a script that will allow you to control the projector. Just give me just a minute, let me get this all set up and we'll show you how this works. So we need to connect the projector to the Raspberry Pi using a serial to USB connector. This cable has a DB9 serial or RS-232 connector on one side, USB on the other. So you're gonna connect the USB to your Pi. We also have to connect power and then this is going to plug into the Raspberry Pi we're going to connect HDMI 0 
to our projector. All right, so now our projector is fired up, it's connected. Uh, what, one more thing we need to change is this FPP remote mode from player. We need it to be set as remote. And then we can jump over to our master FPP here. And to control the projector, I set up a script. So you can go into content setup and you can create a playlist. And in the playlist, what I did is set up a lineup projector that will use my background template that I use to trace my house outline after the projector turns on. That way I can get everything lined up if I take the projector in and out every night. So to do the script, I'll run you through doing that real quick. So you're gonna click add a sequence or entry. Over here, you are going to do an FPP command. And then you're gonna come down to run script. From here, I would enable multicast. You can pick the host you want this to run on. And then from the script name, you can come down and pick the different scripts. For our case, we want projector on go ahead and say add. The projectors usually take a minute or two to get up to brightness and to power on and warm up and things like that. So I add a delay of about a minute. So go ahead and say add another sequence. We are going to do a pause for 60 seconds. And then we're gonna drag these up into the lead in. And then we can say save. That will turn on the projector, wait 60 seconds before it does anything else. And then what we'll do is we can add any of our files into the file manager under video. So we can add whatever we want into our projector. So you'll go to the projector, go to file manager, jump over to video and you'll have these different video files. And then from our master, we can play those on command. So let's see what that looks like. Let me turn off the lights and we will run the projector. So you heard that little beep. That was the projector kicking on. It is going to wait 60 seconds. So I'll speed this up and then it will immediately jump into a projection mapping show that I did for Valentine's Day. So as you can see, my video file is playing through the projector. It's bouncing around because it's mapped to do different things in different spots of my house. And that lines up with our lights as well. So projector fully set up, ready to go. Let's jump over to X-Lights real quick and I'll show you how I kind of combine the two in order to create the show we created. All right, so after we had the projection mapping all set up and configured, what we did is we had the projection run on the house. So in here you can see the projection video. You can see, you know, this is what we sent to the projector, but you can see parts of it are kind of masked out. And you know, as you scroll through, you have your different outlines that are kind of masked out. And then from here, I did the sequence in X-Lights like I normally would. And then I played the two combined over here as a first attempt, just to see what it would look like. And then from there, I began tweaking the lights and the video effects. That way they would start to line up better. So I'm gonna play this. Um, I am gonna mute the audio so I don't get hit with any copyright in issues, but. So it starts playing. I have the video originally starting over here and then it kind of bounces and you know it, it did take some tweaking. We could see you know I still have all the lights on right here and it's real hard to see the video. Same thing over here where it bounces over. You know as it bounces around to these different spots it's pretty hard to see what's projection mapping and what's lights. So over in X-Lights 
I basically blacked out certain portions of the sequence right here, the pixel matrix, and then over here, the bay window. And what this did is when I project onto those areas, the projector showed up a lot better because it doesn't have all the ambient light that it's trying to compete with. So if you have a brighter projector, you may not have to do this as much, but that definitely helped out and created a more seamless blend of projection mapping with the lights. For this show, we wouldn't have been able to get it set up without the help of the Projection Mapping Academy. So if you're looking to get into projection mapping, we'll leave a discount and affiliate link down below in the description. So check them out. They do tutorials. They also do projection mapping videos. So if you want them to create a show for you, they can do that. So shout out to them. Thanks for all the help getting our show set up. For the 4th of July and Halloween show we have coming up, we're planning on doing our own projection show. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those videos. Thanks everyone, we'll see you soon.